Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing another video in my MBTI recommendation series and this is going to be feeling book recommendations. This is my fifth video now, so over halfway through. And feeling is obviously from the feeling versus thinking spectrum. And it's the side that I lean on in that regard. In the Myers-Briggs type indicator, feeling versus thinking has to do specifically with decision making and it's not feeling as in emotions, it's more feeling as in values. So for those of you like me who lean towards feeling over thinking, it's not that you don't think or use logic, it's just that in your decision making, you are letting your values and looking at the specific circumstance play in a bit more. And the feeling side also is very people oriented. So looking at what is best for the individual people, there's more room almost for compassion. Though you can still have compassion on the thinking side as well, obviously. So the books that I recommend for feeling types may be people oriented, but I think mostly they're going to have to do with making value based decisions. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the books, and I'm hopefully not going to take too long. <laughs> and also, all relevant trigger warnings will be in the description of the video. And I'm doing that for all of my videos from here on my out. My first feeling recommendation is going to be a classic, and that is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. My copy is extremely banged up, like I taped the entire spine, but I got it for free in a free bin, so. <laughs> And this one is following the extremely difficult life of Sally. And there are a plethora of trigger warnings that are relevant for this particular book, all in the description. Other than the trigger warnings, I think it's a little bit better to not know the actual plot line of this book and to just go in knowing that it's written in a letter kind of format and that these are Sally's letters to God that she is writing throughout the course of the book. Though I wasn't sure what I thought of this at the beginning, my emotions were being tugged more and more and my caring for the people in this book. There are also some people in this book that I could not stand, but that's to be expected based on the specific plot and triggers of the book. But I think that this is interesting, particularly when you consider Sally's values and then the relationship that she has with her sister. I think that that makes this a very feelings-oriented book particularly in regards to some of the circumstances in Sully's life. My second feeling recommendation is actually sort of the second book in a series, but it's a prequel, but I recommend that you read it second. And that is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. And this is the second book in the Wayward Children series, though it's really a prequel for Every Heart a Doorway because it's specifically telling the portal fantasy story of Jack and Jill, whom you meet in Every Heart a Doorway at the boarding school. And I'm not entirely sure that I would say Wayward Children in general is a feelings-oriented book, but this one has so much to do with values and how values and circumstances impact a life that I wanted to specifically recommend this one. Jack and Jill grow up with very restrictive parents who put specific gendered sort of expectations on the two children without allowing them to explore their own identity really. They are twins and they're put into kind of opposing roles despite the interests they may actually have. Then one day they open their doorway and go to the moors which is this very dark, atmospheric, kind of paranormal portal world. But they both in ways find themselves there and learn a lot about themselves. Though I would say you follow Jack more than Jill. As I've already stated, this one has very strong values related themes. And then I think a lot of the choices that are made by characters in this book are extremely values based. I can't go into how the decisions that are made in this book are values based because that would be spoilery. But I can say that this one deals a lot in dealing with the circumstances and how circumstances are differing for everyone. So I highly recommend the Wayward Children series for feeling types specifically in this book, though I did prefer Every Heart a Doorway myself. This one, I can't remember if I've said, is YA. It is kind of paranormal portal fantasy and it's slightly horror-esque in the atmosphere. My third recommendation is going to be a nonfiction book that makes a lot of sense for a feeling recommendation. And that's going to be Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent, and Lead. And 
I don't really know what to even say about why this book would be a feeling recommendation because it just makes sense. I think a lot of values-based decision making leaves you in a more vulnerable position because it's not based purely on logic and this one is talking about how being vulnerable can help you and how being vulnerable is not easy. And it also has a lot to do with combating shame because shame is like the enemy of vulnerability. Shame is the reason we often don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And I think that is particularly relevant. I mean, it's for everybody, but for feeling types, I think it'll strike a special chord. Brene Brown is a social worker. This, I would say, is kind of like self-help, but I class it for myself as counseling or psychology because I think that it helps me in my own profession. My fourth recommendation is going to be one of my favorite trilogies of all time. And it's another one that I have books that I recommend that you start with before these books, though these could be their own standalone and that is the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. And oh boy, this was one of the first feeling book recommendations I ever had because of the values and the societal values that are being examined in this trilogy. I recommend For the Realm of the Elderlings starting in Robin Hobb's Farseer trilogy and then reading Live Ship Traders, but you can read Live Ship Traders on their own. And you can read it before Farseer, but publication and chronologically though, Live Ship Traders is after Farseer. And the reason that I say that this is a feeling trilogy is because there is the Bingtown Society that is often based on tradition, but in ways the world is changing and Bingtown needs to be reworked and their decisions aren't always logical, they're having to examine as a town, a city, a people, what it is that they value and how they want to maintain those values going into this new changing world, how they want to adapt, what they want to keep, and what doesn't serve them anymore. And it's so values driven and people oriented. There are so many phenomenal characters in the Live Ship Traders trilogy, though some of the main characters that you're following are from the Vestrit family or the Vestrits and Havens because a Haven has married a Vestrit. Aside from all the fantastical elements, this is just so good. So I would say that the reworking of Bingtown Society alone makes this a feeling book. There are explorations of trauma in this trilogy, though really there are explorations of trauma throughout the entire realm of the Elderlings, or at least the first three trilogies that I have read, that I think tie in well with the compassion of the feeling type, and I just cannot recommend it highly enough. I forgot to mention a minute ago, a reason that I didn't say very much about Daring Greatly was that I've actually done an entire video review of it shortly after I started my channel, so I will link that in the cards. And I thought about that because I have already done an entire spoiler-free review of my fifth recommendation for feeling types, and that is The Orphan Band of Springdale by Anne Nesbitt. As such, I'm not going to say a ton about the plot of this book. This is a 2018 release that I received for review. And I might not even say too much about the actual themes, other than that you need to know that this is very themes oriented, because I've spoken extensively about them in my spoiler free video review. But we've been talking about values based decision making, right? Augusta Neubronner makes so many values based decisions consistently throughout the book. She is going for what she thinks is right, what she values, what she holds to be true, and that's how she decides to do things even when they're hard, and I loved it. This is middle grade historical fiction set just before the start of World War II. This is about Augusta and the people that she meets in Springdale, Maine, and I just highly recommend it. This is some of the best middle grade that I've ever read, and obviously I'm going to be linking in the cards my spoiler free review. I really recommend checking that out if this interests you at all. Augusta is a sweet and considerate and kind girl who is quiet but uses her voice when she needs to to stand up for what she believes to be right. And I think it's beautiful. But anyway, these are the books that I recommend for feeling types. If you're looking for books where characters are making their decisions based on the values that they hold, books that are people oriented, but really take the specific character's circumstance into account in their decision making, these all fall into that category. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these and also what are some books that you think would work for the feeling types. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye.